clipless pedals are popular because they provide a firm, secure connection between bike and rider that's easier to release than previous system with straps and slotted cleats. But which of the many systems out there is best for you? Well, to help you decide, we've picked six clipless pedals that we've reviewed here at RoadCC that provide a good selection of what's available, as well as some of the pros and cons for each system. If you're already using clipless pedals, do let us know which brand and model you're using and why in the comments section below. We'd love to hear what you're all using out there. And if you're new to clipless pedals, then just sit back and let us talk you through six choices. First up is Shimano's top level Jura Ace R9100 pedals. And they offer loads of security and stability, and they're a few grams lighter than the previous version, although still not quite as light as some of their biggest rivals. The pedal platform is 66 millimeters wide, which is a little wider than previously and provides plenty of stability. That broad platform is one of the best things about these pedals, and is especially welcome when you're riding out of the saddle. The Jura Ace pedals still offer wide ranging tension adjustment via a hex bolt, which is something you don't get with Lux Kio blades, for example. A pair of Shimano's blue-tipped SPD SL cleats are included in the box, offering a middling amount of float. But if you feel they're not right for you, then there are yellow and red options available too. We found the Jura Ace 9100 pedals to be solid and reliable, and there's every indication that just like their predecessors, they'll prove durable too. Add in a warranty of three years rather than the standard two, and they're a really good choice for pedals. Look was one of the first brands to offer a clipless pedal, and these Kiro blades are its latest version. The really cool thing about them is that the carbon blade can be changed, allowing you to adjust the tension to suit your personal preference. Now, as with all clipless pedals, you need to get the hang of lining your feet and the cleat up in the right position, but after a few rides, you can really get it dialed in. The look pedals hang at an angle, which makes clipping in easier. When you press down, the cleat retention mechanism does its thing with a loud click, so you always know whether or not you're clipped in, which is a bonus. These newest Kio blades have a larger surface area for more cleat support than the previous versions. However, we have found this possible to detect a small amount of sideways rocking. Now, how much of this is an issue for you largely comes down to pedaling technique, and it might not even be a problem for some people. What there is though is lots of float, but if the stock cleats aren't floaty enough, you can buy cleats with extra float. You can even buy a zero float cleat if that's more what you're into. So overall, the Look Kio Blade Carbons have a lot to recommend about them. Despite the fact that some people can experience that slight rocking between the cleats and the pedals, they're light though and secure and the fact that you get blades with different retention cleat levels is a real bonus. If you want to go clipless without spending vast wads of cash, these B-Twin 500 pedals at just 20 quid are a great option. They might be cheap, but there really is nothing cheap about their performance. That said, they're not light pedals though. At this price, something did have to give, and in this circumstances, it is the weight. Granted, for most cyclists, that's not gonna be much of a concern, because being able to get a clipless pedal for the price of a big round of drinks is a bonus. The red cleats you get don't have any fancy pontoons or protective nubbins stuck on them, so if you like to walk around nature reserves in inappropriate shoes, you're not gonna get much of a life out of them and walking in them is as duck awkward as you'd expect. Now there's no float in the B-Twin cleats, so your knee will either be fine with this rigid interface or not. The B-Twin 500s are okay pedals, especially for the price. If you can live with the lack of the float, the body of the pedal is large enough to not cause any hot spots or feelings of roll, and it's stiff enough to provide enough of a platform depending on what cycling you're doing. Now, one of the most interesting tech developments is the integration of power meters into pedals, and these Garmin Vector 3s are probably the best pedal power meter yet. Garmin has completely redesigned its Vector pedals, and the Vector 3 system is excellent. You get accurate power readings, they're easier to swap between bikes, and they look much neater, and it helps that they're a bit lighter too. Add to that the fact that the price has dropped to £849.99, and they're an enticing proposition. The new body is much smoother than the angular body of the Vector 2s, and I'd say these Vectors look like the most normal power pedals we've ever seen on the market. The Vector 3 is an entirely new design, and it does away with the pods completely. As you'd expect, all the electronics are contained within that new pedal body, and everything has been redesigned. Of course, the electronics are new, but so is the pedal body, the axle, and even the bearings. The batteries provide 120 hours of runtime, but changing them is slightly tricky, so that's something you need to think about. 
Now, transmitting your power to a computer is taken care of by AMP Plus and Bluetooth Smart Connectivity. Or you can use your phone to collect data and connect it to Zwift or Trainer Roads. And on both occasions, we found it to be accurate and consistent. Now, these pedals aren't the cheapest, but they work really well, and they're probably the best pedal power meter that you can buy right now. Okay, so all of the clipless pedals we've talked about so far are the road style with three bolt cleats. But there is another option. Shimano's SPD two bolt cleat system, favored by mountain bikers, is ideal for road cycling, especially where you might be commuting or touring, or if you're likely to head off roads. And these M520 pedals are classics, solidly dependable and very reasonably priced. SPD pedals are also dual sided, which makes clipping at the traffic lights so much easier. No fumbling for the pedal, and the recessed cleat also means you can walk in them much easily too. The M520s are alloy bodies with steel mechanisms and axle. They're on a cup and cone bearing, which is easily accessible and replaceable if needs be. The range of cleat tension adjustment is very good, and the entry and exit is a positive as well. So whenever the issue of SPDs versus road pedals comes up, there's normally plenty of discussion as to whether you need that bigger platform. For many, the convenience of shoes that you can walk in plus the dual-sided and easy engagement makes them a winner and outweighs any tiny incremental gains in efficiency. What we'll do is put a link in the description to a really good article comparing Shimano's SPD SL to SPD and which is right for you. It's a question we get asked a lot and there's no easy answer, but if you're racing, go SPD SL. If you're commuting or touring, go SPD, or at least that's our advice anyway. Turn the conventional clipless pedals on its head, the unique Speedplay pedals with their lollipop design combine a small and light pedal body with all the engagement mechanism housed and a large cleat attached to the shoe. Their big advantage is a huge range of float, but it can take some getting used to, and we know plenty of people out there that do find this adjustment difficult. But it is a godsend for cyclists with gammy knees. It also makes it really hard to set up the cleats incorrectly too. As long as it's firmly fixed under the ball of your foot, you're pretty much good to go. And you can reduce the range of float with two adjustment screws on the cleat. What also helps is that they're dual sided, so clipping in is potentially easier, but they do take more force to push onto the cleat onto the pedal and a large twist action because of all that float is required to get it off. Another downside is they're not great if you get dirt in them, so you want to keep your cleats clean. Speaking of which, walking on metal cleats is precarious at the best of times, but if you do need to do this, you can get a cover that makes this a little bit safer. Speedplay Zero pedals are obviously offered at different price points. I'd suggest you get the chromely ones. They're a bit heavier, but they are much cheaper. Although, if you want the safe weight, you can do with the pricey titanium versions, but you do need to be feeling flush for these. Now the cleats also are much more expensive, but they last longer in our experience, as walking in them doesn't wear them down like Shimano and Lux's plastic cleats, which really don't like being walked in. However, if you want more float, then these are definitely worth consideration. Now, as you can see, not all clipless pedals are the same, but hopefully this selection of six gives you a really good overview of the variety available, with a focus on the key types that are popular with cyclists. Which you choose is entirely down to personal preference and the type of cycling that you do. So there you go, that's our list. Thanks for watching this video. If you like it, then make sure you hit that thumbs up. Subscribe to Road CC if you haven't already for a range of cycling videos. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.